Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and this is part two of the ongoing saga for the history of central heating systems. So if this is the first video you're watching, you're starting at the wrong place. You need to go back to the video before and start there. For those of you watching the second video, buckle up, settle down, clean your ears out and get ready because I'll only say this once for the next chapter. Our next evolution. We've now gone to a gas boiler. Okay, we've still got a cylinder, we've still got a feed system. This part of the distribution pipe stays exactly the same. But we've got a coil in there now, so we've separated the cylinder from the boiler now. So this is now an indirect cylinder. Under the building regulations G3, it is a requirement to register vented and unvented cylinders with your local building control. So remember from uh, the video before, this is now an indirect cylinder, the other one was a direct cylinder. So let's see if you were listening. Got a question for you. How far should this piece of pipe be? That is from the top of the cylinder to the uh, vent pipe and what does it stop so answers at the end let's see if you were listening in the first one let's see if your glass eye didn't go to sleep okay so let's have a look at this we're back to our primary circuits again we've got our flow off into the coil and then returning back to the boiler we've still got our radiator towel warmer in the bathroom but this time now because we're separate from the cylinder we're not direct anymore we need to fill this circ, this primary circ, with water. And the way we do that is what's called the F&E system. F&E standing for feed and expansion. Did you know we should drink at least one and a half litres of water per day to stop us getting dehydrated? Oh, off with the flow. There's your vent pipe, your safety pipe. So if anything happens in this system now, if the water boils because the boiler stat we now have some way of controlling the heat we have a boiler stat if that does fail this is our safety device and will again send the hot water over back into the the feed system we've now got a cold fill now coming down into there we're still gravity though we're still 28 circuit pipes we've still no pump that's the next evolution okay so now we've closed off the cylinder, we've now got some way of controlling the heat. We have a boiler stat. We still weren't using cylinder stats, but we do have a boiler stat where we can adjust the temperature, unlike the solid fuel. So that's the next one. What we're going to do next is we're going to look at this F&E system a little bit more closely. The F&E system must always be installed lower than a cold water storage system. Because if anything happens to the coil within the cylinder, the water from the central heating would not mix with the stored cold water. What I've done now um, is of a feed system, but there are a lot of similarities with an F&E. So we'll look at this first. Okay, major differences on an F&E, we wouldn't have the indirect cold water going down to the cylinder. So this is what would feed the uh, cylinder. It could all the average person in the UK uses about 150 litres of water per day. Our great grandparents only managed with 18 litres of water per day. No wonder old people stink. This is the indirect cold water going down to feed a shower. Okay, so you can see the difference here from the bottom of the system to the bottom of the outlet of the pipe. On the cold side is 30 millimetres. On the hot side, it's 55 millimetres. And the reason why we do this is so, if this was feeding the cylinder, the hot water would run out first. So as the water level came down, it would run out of hot water before it ran out of cold. If it was the other way around, it would be a little bit dangerous, okay? Especially if you're having a shower. Hot water at 49 degrees centigrade, 120 degrees Fahrenheit, will take eight minutes to give you second degree burns. At 60 degrees centigrade, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, it will only take three seconds to give you second degree burns and five seconds to give you third degree burns. 
that's uh, the the difference between the the system and the the ethanol. But the rest of it is all to buy the old bylaw thirties on the on the water regulations. Okay, we always follow the water regulations for the installation of systems. The other thing I just want to quickly look at is the overflow. So the overflow always has to be, this is the spillover level of the overflow, and this must always be 25 millimetres from the finished water level. If the cold feed pipe to a cistern is 15 millimetres, then the overflow must be the next size up at least 22 millimetres. The other main one is the 350 from the rafters and the roof to be able to service the float operating valve. So this is an FOV, float operating valve. We can't call them ball cocks anymore. Mm, anyway, so part two or three. Did you know it takes 100 litres of water to make two slices of bread? And 150 litres of water to make one pint of beer? No wonder you can't stop going to the toilet when you've had a pint. So this is a part two float operated valve. So the, this is the way it goes in into the f and &E or the, the system. This is where the water comes in from the mains and this is where the water is going to come out. So this is the centre line of the valve here. So we have from the centre line there to the top of there, well the bottom of there, we've got a 25 mil air gap. That stops the water being sucked back into the cold drinking water main because we would have an overflow on the other side which would be also from the centre of there centre of there to the spillover level of there will be a minimum of 25 millilitres okay so we're always protecting the cold water main not interested in anything else we just don't want to suck this dirty water if it was an F&E system back into the drinking water it's all about protecting it's all about back siphonage yeah, back siphon. Okay, so other thing you'll see on here is this little mushroom. It's not a mushroom. My art teacher would be really proud of me with this drawing. You wouldn't believe I got old level art, would you? Well, that mushroom is representing the vent because this has a closed fitting lid. We have a dip tube going under the water. We've also got a screen in there to stop insects coming back up into the overflow going into the system. So it's kind of a, it's a sealed system that, that would make it a tank. Remember from the first video, we went to water in a tank. This isn't a tank, it's a system. So we need some way of venting it. All systems must be installed on marine ply, which must be at least 18 millimeters thick and be at least 150 mil in all directions larger than the base of the system. So this is an F&E, okay? This is a, an 18-12-12 system. This is what's used for your feed and expansion. Let's have a look at this now. All systems must be installed to the water regulations and the building regulations document G. Let's talk about this uh, F&E, this feed system. Okay, so same little drawing. Little difference now is we've only got one cold feed coming off this. So this cold feed will then feed the central heating system. This only requires to be 15 millimetres. It's still 30 millimetres off the bottom of the system. The reason why we do that is so it collects debris. The discoloured water you can see here is corrosion. This could be caused by incorrectly installed pumps or incorrectly installed f and &E systems. We've still got a dip tube. The dip tube is still the same. The spillover level still needs to fill, still need to finish at the finish level of the water. We've still got our 25 mil from our FOV. It's still a part two FOV. The difference between a, a part two and a part one is the part one, the water would come off here. Okay, so that means we wouldn't have an air gap. So we're not allowed to use those in, the, in a central heating f &E because the water we would have in there would be fluid category three or even fluid category four. So we couldn't get that in there. So fluid categories are what um, the water regulations rules are. Because central heating water is classed as fluid category four, never leave a filling loop connected on a combi boiler. Five fluid categories. Fluid category one is wholesome drinking water. 
Fluid category two is slightly changed its taste or its color or its temperature. So Ribena, tea, coffee, they're fluid category two. Fluid category three is a very small health list. Fluid category four is quite a significant and fluid category five is a severe health list. So there's five fluid categories. So not many compared to we drink this water, one being wholesome, two being okay. So we drink two and uh, one and two, we've only got three, four and five, which could make us poorly. Five could potentially kill us. Now then, the vent pipe, okay. Now, you'll read a lot on the internet about vent pipes, and they basically say a vent pipe takes up the expansion of the water. Mm, no, it doesn't, no. The vent pipe is there solely to equalize the pressure to make sure everything stays under atmospheric pressure. And there's a safety device like we spoke about in the hot water vent pipe. It discharges the hot water. A Couple of things we've got to make sure with these vent pipes is, that the vent pipe from the bottom of the pipe to the top of the finished water level is more than 450 mil. And the reason why we do this 450 mil is because of pump surging. So you could have the water level under these circumstances would be at the same level. Okay, so once the pump starts, it could actually send the water higher, but not alter it into the feed system or the FNE system. So that's why we take it higher over the 450. If we're terminating it above the um, FOV, the float operated valve, it's not a good idea, okay? It's always better to put it down at the other end because if that does discharge, it'll discharge on the, on the, on the FOV. If you do terminate the vent pipe over the top of the FOV, the gap between the two must be at least twice the internal diameter of the vent pipe. Also, while we're talking about the FOV again, it's always better again to put the outlet the opposite end of the inlet, because as this would be filling, this would be creating all the air bubbles and then it would allow it to run out there. And if this was a feed system, what would happen is we wouldn't get stagnant water we would always get the water running, coming in and running out. So it's always best to put our outlets at the opposite end of our inlet. Again, we've got a close fitting lid and again, we've got uh, the um, vent on the top. Again, on the FOV, we need an isolation valve. Now on the cold feed, we don't put an isolation valve, okay? We don't put an isolation valve on here because this is where the expansion comes in. This is where the water expands. So we can find water naturally in all three states on this planet. So we have um, ice, we've got water, and we've got steam, okay? So when the water expands, it will rise the water level in here, and this is our finished water level, remember? So water rises from four degrees, it's maximum density. So maximum density means all the molecules are as close as they're gonna get. So from four degrees to 100 degrees, it expands by 4%. So if this was a 100 litre feed system, okay, we must allow for the extra four litres. Now you'll see it a lot and they'll say, oh, the water weight of that water is too much for it to expand. But no, the, the, the water level is the expansion and the F&E, &E, we have to allow for that. Because it's important that our, where our finished water level is and that we allow for this expansion. Because if we didn't, it would end up going over the, the overflow and wasting water and all the chemicals you put in there would, would end up disappearing. Water also expands when it's freezing. So from four degrees to uh, minus 360 degrees, absolute zero, it will expand by 10%. That's why when you make ice cubes, you'll put your level on your tray and then when you pull them out of the freezer, they've grown. Nearly 70% of the world is covered by water. Only 2.5% of this water is fresh water, the rest being seawater. And then there is only 1% of fresh water which is easily accessible to us. The rest is trapped in the North and South Pole. This is becoming very rare that you would install an F&E on a system. You might replace one, but it's very rare that you will actually install one because most of the systems we install now are sealed systems. 
But that's the end of part two of this epic ongoing saga of the history of central heating. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, why don't you leave us a comment down below or give us a like, thumbs up. If you haven't hit that notification bell yet for the rest of the videos, then do so and look out for Wednesdays when we'll be releasing part three. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Cheers. I bet you thought I'd forgotten about the question I asked you earlier. Well, here's the answer. From the cylinder to the vent pipe, you need 450 mil. And this is to stop single pipe or parasitic circulation.